one of the most talked about mods that I've done to the car. Totally DIY job. Exactly what it looks like up close. The worst panel. An amazing job. Cost me a grand total of... Believe it or not, it's been about six months since we vinyl wrapped my Mark 6 Fiesta ST, but it's still one of the most talked about mods that I've done to the car to date. People are always really interested in the color, but one of the questions I get asked the most is, where did I get it done? But for those of you that are new to the channel or simply just didn't know, this is a totally DIY job done by me and my mates in preparation for Ford Fair 2021. And another question I get asked quite a lot is how much did the vinyl wrap actually cost? Now I've hinted at it quite a few times that this was very cheap compared to paying someone to do this for me, but I've never actually told you exactly how much it cost. I've always kind of skated around it because I kind of wanted to wait for this video to give you an in-depth look at the job. I wanted to take you in a little bit closer and show you exactly what it looks like up close and then tell you how much it costs so that you can make your own minds up as to whether you think it was worth it to do a DIY job on this. And you never know, maybe it would even inspire some of you to give it a go yourself. But I tell you what, it's definitely not very inspiring at the moment because the car is filthy. So let's fix that first. Right, okay, so that is the car clean and dry. So now we should be able to see a little bit better and take a closer look at this vinyl wrap. I'm gonna talk you through some of the key bits of the wrap from when we actually did it, going through what went well, what went maybe not so well, things that we learned, and also some things that I'm gonna to have to do again. And then at the end of this video, I'm finally gonna tell you how much this actually cost me to vinyl wrap DIY. So starting off with the bonnet, this is the first piece that we tried to wrap. We thought we'd go with the bonnet because it was a nice big, fairly flat piece and we thought that would make it easier but we were definitely wrong it was actually really hard because of the large surface area in both directions it actually makes it really hard because you've not only got to stretch it up towards the windscreen as well as down in that direction you've also got to go left and right as well over quite a wide area and that really does make it hard especially when you're just starting out okay yeah so just really quickly it's probably worth mentioning i'm not sure if i said it earlier in the video i probably did but this is the first time we've ever done this we'd never wrapped anything before we just sent it with this so if you think we were doing something wrong or whatever then yeah we probably were because like i said we were just having a go for the first ever time so just just a disclaimer i suppose so this color is called satin matte chrome red and different finishes of vinyl wrap can react differently to stretching and heat most gloss vinyl wraps are probably pretty forgiving when it comes to heating and stretching, but some finishes like chromes and this satin matte chrome red color can distort if you overheat and overstretch them. And that is what you can kind of see here. I think it is just coming across on the camera, but these kind of more purple patches that you can see here, this is where the wrap distorted because we heated it and stretched it too much. Now, this is something that we did get the hang of a little bit later on, and there aren't actually too many spots like those on the car. I'm just going to get in a little bit closer so hopefully you can clearly see the difference between here and here. That is the distortion in the color that I was talking about. It's not too bad and it's certainly not that noticeable unless you're actually looking for it. 
I mean, I can see it really clearly now, but honestly, the different angles and stuff, the way this wrap actually shimmers because of this finish, you're not gonna see it too much, but I just thought it was something worth telling you because it's something we found out quite early on. But luckily, we actually got a feel for when the wrap was going to stretch too far and when we'd applied too much heat. So this is something that we managed to cut out quite early and not do too many times again. But overall, I'm really happy with the finish we eventually got on the bonnet. Yes, it was difficult and yes, we learned a lot in the very first panel that we wrapped, but there's no major creases. To be honest, I don't think there's any creases. There's no like raised bits around the edges that you can see where we've tucked it around. Like it's all been cut really well and tucked in perfectly. And I've never had any problems with anything lifting or anything like that on the bonnet. So really happy with that for our first panel. The next panel that we wanted to tackle was the wings. Now the wings, compared to the bonnet was so much easier because you had a much sort of narrower space to have to wrap into. Remember I said with the bonnet, because it was kind of wide and long as well, then it just made it a lot more difficult. But because the wings are kind of split into this thin section here and this thin section down here, it was actually a lot easier to wrap. And again, really good lines here. You can't really see any signs of anything peeling. It's all tucked around really well. There's no creases or anything like that in the wings. And like I said, they were a lot easier. As you can see, there isn't any sort of distortion in that at all. The slight difference in color you can maybe see there is just because of the angle that we're at. There's definitely none of this distortion that you can see here anywhere in this wing. And it's the same story on this side. There is just one little thing about the wing on this side that really bugs me, but it's nothing to do with the job we did at the wrap. It's just the amount of times I've had to take the headlights in and out. And that is that it does catch really badly here and it has torn the wrap slightly, but it's been like that for many months now. And it hasn't got any worse because it seems to have stuck down really well, despite the fact that the, the light has kind of caught it and ripped a bit of that off. But nevertheless, I mean, you can still see the rest of it is looking really good. I mean, just look up that panel there. It looks so good. So the wings, can't fault them, super happy with them. But despite how well the bonnet and the wings went, it did eat up a lot of our time because they were the first few panels that we did. So we were really just trying to learn how the vinyl was gonna work and how to actually do this. Because like I said earlier, we'd never done this before until we had a go at it. So. They did eat up a lot of our time, so we wanted to really make a big push with the next panel that we didn't get something big that we knew would be time consuming out the way. So that's why we moved on next to the rear quarter, but it's not just the rear quarter down here. The reason I searched up here is because it is one full piece that you need all the way from here that comes all the way back to the entire rear quarter and then also back down under the side skirt as well. So that was a massive piece. It was three meters long. And then obviously you've got to make a cut out for the door and all sorts of stuff like that. So that piece was really challenging and it took hours and hours and hours just to do one side. I'd hate to think how many times when doing these rear quarters that we had to lift the wrap up and readjust it and lay it back down again. But overall, I mean, I know it happened a lot up here, but overall, there's still not any creases or any marks from where we did it. And there definitely was as we were going, we had to pull out a lot of creases, heat them up and then get them flattened down again. But as you can see, it is looking really good. I'm trying to find something that I could maybe show you where it might show up because I know we did have some issues in this area. Around here maybe, yeah, you can just see a couple of little creases and marks here. Those marks, they're not like scratches as such, it's just from where we had creases, kind of like these bits you can see. So the darker marks were creases that we managed to flatten out, but it just sort of left that horrible mark in the vinyl. But this kind of area here is the only place where you're really gonna see that on this panel. I just remember having a really difficult time with that bit right there. And also like up under the spoiler because of the sort of curvature of this. And because we were kind of scared because of the distortion we got on the bonnet, we weren't really heating and stretching so much at this point. We were doing it to an extent when we needed to, but we weren't doing it that much. Another place we had a real difficult time of it was curving around the back here. I was at this piece for probably over an hour, like literally just sort of from the fuel cap back to here with a lot of heat and a lot of stretching. Actually, we did have to use that quite a lot, but as you can see, that is just some moisture from where I've washed the car, but there's no sort of distortion in the color, no creases that are evident once it was finally laid down. So again, really happy with how we actually got the rear quarter done. One little bit that if you've seen the car up close, you will have probably noticed, or I will have pointed out to you if you've seen it at a show or anything, is that we cut it a tiny bit short here. We didn't realize that there's kind of like a, a cut out in the side skirt, so it doesn't quite cover that bit of the rear quarter. So that is still black and it's the same on both sides, unfortunately. But nevertheless, the rear quarters, again, super happy with the job we got on those. I was really worried about this sort of piece here and that is not water, sadly. That is actually where the wrap is not so much lifting. It never actually sat down completely flush, but I mean, you, you, you can't really tell, but 
that is one little place where it's, like I say, it's not because it's lifted so much. It's just that it was so stretched to get around that corner and we didn't want to cut too much into it as a relief cut because we thought you'd be able to see the black paint underneath here if we didn't tuck the wrap in far enough. So that piece was a bit of a pain, but again, it's not really an issue and it still looks really good all the way along there. The line down the door as well, like it's still come out really well. Like I'm, I'm not complaining at all, but like I said, I wanna be transparent with this and just show you exactly how it all came out. And pretty much the same story on the other side. Again, this one went really well, but again, we did cut it a little bit short just down here. Not as bad as the other side. It's not as noticeable, but you can just see a little bit of the black through there. Like that is actually the black paint. You can see it's not just like a, a dark recess like that. Like you can actually see the paint just about. But I mean, from a distance, again, you can't really notice it. So both rear quarters, really happy with them. So because the rear quarters were two three meter pieces, bear in mind the wrap is 1.52 meters tall and they were three meters long through the rear quarters. We had a lot of excess cut off because we only really needed this thin strip here once you get past here. So we actually used the rest of that as you would, obviously to do the doors. So because it was already pretty much cut out, the doors were next. Now it's worth noting, we removed the door handles, we removed these side strips and these were a pain to get off. And this was all wrapped separately off the car before being stuck back on. Again, side skirts and all that sort of stuff came off. But the next thing we did, like I said, was the doors and this door in particular me and martin did this door while ash and catherine worked on the other side and this door was an absolute pig to do like it comes across really well now i actually don't think you can see or even feel like i have just washed the car so it should be pretty clean actually coming back to it now there's not really anything to show you like i'm really trying hard to find something but there's nothing that's going to come up on the camera. Now, it was a really long day when we were doing the doors and I kind of got a bit lazy when it came to all the trimming. So we've got some little pieces like this where it maybe was trimmed a little bit too short and wasn't quite enough to tuck around. So that is annoying. And then I got a bit lazy with the cutting up here. I found this stuff really hard to cut. Like it is quite a thick vinyl. So you can just see where it's not quite to the edge here. And a few little bits here that don't look so good. Again, here, these corners didn't tuck in too well. That's actually part of the rear quarter. But overall, I mean, I still think it's a pretty good job. So just jumping inside the car now, one thing I really wasn't bothered about was the door shuts. But then even more so, I wasn't bothered about how neat this was in here because we were rushing. Like, this doesn't look good at all once you open the doors. I mean, it's not a problem. I'm not really bothered by it and it all sits down perfectly flat and it's never had any sorts of problems with peeling or anything like that. You can see that's just where we cut that bit a little bit too short. It should have come much further down like to here, but not to worry. So yeah, I mean, the cutting and tucking job that we did here, or sorry, rather I did here. The other side is a lot better because Ash and Catherine did the other side, but yeah, it's not amazing. Like there's quite a lot of creases and little bubbles and it's not cut straight and all that sort of stuff. Like you can just see some bubbles there. But again, like I said, it's not really something that bothered me too much, simply because, I mean, nine times out of 10, the door's gonna be shut anyway. Like, it's just not something that really bothered me, but it is something, it's worth noting that it would have taken a hell of a lot more time to do if we'd have done a really neat cutting and trimming and tucking job with all of those edges. Now, as far as the roof goes, part of the reason we left the roof black was because I wasn't sure if we were gonna have enough vinyl. I'll tell you exactly how much vinyl it actually took to wrap this car completely. And I think we would have had enough to do the roof if it had come down to it. But I decided because of the time, the worry of running out of vinyl, and also the fact that I just kind of liked the roof black, we left it and I'm glad we did. I think it looks really good and it really breaks up the car quite a lot. And then the spoiler. The plan was to wrap the spoiler. We ran out of time. The spoiler wasn't even on on the drive to Ford Fair and the bolt holes were just covered by this and we cut them out and bolted the spoiler on when we got there. Now the plan has always been to remove it and wrap it, but I just haven't got around to it. It's been winter, it's too cold, and I just haven't really had time to get it done. But loads of people say they like it black. So for now, I'm not too fussed about it. Now the next piece was this boot panel and we actually had to have a couple of goes at this because like I just mentioned about not wanting to rewrap the spoiler now because it's winter and it was cold, we tried to do this late one night, even though it was in the summer, the temperature dropped quite considerably. And when we were trying to stretch this piece down into here, we had a major problem. The wrap was just not going in at all. And because of the temperature and not getting enough heat in it with a heat gun, it actually ripped and we wasted a whole 
piece of vinyl and that kind of put us on the back foot and that's partly the reason why we were worried about not having enough for the roof because we thought if we can rip it that easily and it happens again like luckily it didn't happen on a rear quarter because it's such a big piece like three meters of vinyl but it happened on the back and luckily we managed to sort of take stock and just think let's leave it there for tonight and have another go with fresh heads in the morning and when we came back to do it the second time round, like it came out really well like it stretched down into here really easily it heated and stretched quite nicely there's no real distortion in the color at all it might look like it a little bit on camera but that is literally just the angle i'm at if you look at this in person there's no sort of that purpley effect that you can see on the bonnet so i'm really happy with how this turned out again this trim piece here was removed and wrapped separately and all the other little bits like i said earlier all came off the car but i'll get to those a bit later on because those were part of the mad rush of getting this ready for ford fair on the final day and now it's on to the two panels that gave us the most stress and made us sit and think on like three days into wrapping this that we just weren't going to be able to do it we weren't going to be able to finish it we weren't going to get it ready for ford fair like it was that difficult because we were so scared of heating and stretching and those two panels are of course the front and rear bumpers now you can see straight off the bat why these were first of all going to be so hard to do if they were just in good condition anyway because of the curvature all the little different angles all the cutouts all the different shapes and all that sort of stuff because it is really hard to work with, especially like this vinyl. I'm, I can't speak for other brands, but this vinyl was really difficult to work with. So when we came to doing these bumpers, it was just a nightmare. It really stressed us out and we really struggled with it. And then also, if you've seen all the videos on this car and doing the vinyl wrap, then you'll know that I actually had to paint part of the front and rear bumpers before we could wrap them. And that made me nervous as well because I was just worried about lifting the paint if I maybe didn't do a good enough prep job or if I didn't give it enough time to cure and all that sort of stuff because we were really pushed to get it all done in time. So the bumpers were just stress, stress, stress. And out of everything, they're probably the panels that I would choose to do again. And I have got enough vinyl, I think, to do them. So we probably will do them again in the future. But at first glance, they actually don't look too bad. But if you remember from those videos that this whole section here was just a mess. There was paint missing, there was flaking, there was cracking, there was really deep scratches in the bumper. So there was a lot of work to get it ready for the wrap. And then you can see here, there's a couple of spots like this. Now this isn't an air bubble. This is actually where we've laid the panel. There's another piece along here. So this is where we've actually laid the panel and then had to lift the wrap up to readjust it and lay it back down. It's actually pulled the paint up with it and then stuck that paint back down. So this little piece here is probably from sort of more down here somewhere. And then we've kind of stretched it up into this recess under the headlight and it's kind of just stuck it back down there. So there's quite a few little patches like that on the front bumper. Those are probably the worst ones, this one here and the one I've just showed you there. And something that's really upset me because I've only just noticed this when washing the car is a stone chip here. This is the first chip I've actually had in this vinyl wrap. It was gonna happen, like it's bound to happen eventually. It's just annoying that I've just found it now and making this video. Another place on the bumper that's caused a couple of issues is tucking in here under the headlight. You can see we've obviously tried to stretch it down into there and it has actually ripped the wrap. So I'm not looking to push that down in and try and get it to stick again. I mean, it probably wouldn't now anyway, it's lost its adhesive. So it's just not gonna go down, but I'm just kind of leaving that because again, from a distance, you can't really see it, but if I do try and force those areas, it probably will rip and it probably will end up out here and you'll be able to see the black from further away. So that's definitely not something I'm gonna be messing with because like I said, we're gonna be rewrapping this anyway. You can just see a little crease there, but other than that, there's a little one up here and more of like an air ball. That's kind of the same sort of thing that's happened under the light. It's just a really awkward angle to stretch into and this wrap wasn't very forgiving, but I think overall we did really well. But yeah, like I said, we were having stress, stress, stress with the bumpers and we were at the point where we were nearly ready to give up and we thought, you know what? We're not getting anywhere. We can't get creases out. We can't get it to lay flat. We can't get rid of all the sort of excess wrap we had when we were going into those recesses around the fog lights and things like that. So we just decided one last chance, we're gonna have to have another go with heat and stretching. So we decided to be brave, but this is where we actually learned how to avoid the distortion that we got on the bonnet. So we sort of got a feel for when the wrap was starting to be a bit more like forgiving once it got warm, but then also when it was going too far, we could sort of get a feel for how much pressure to put on it when we stretched it so that we weren't overstretching it and causing that distortion. So we managed to do that 
on those fog surrounds and once we kind of learned how to do it we were a lot more confident and then we moved on to the back bumper now sadly the back bumper is probably worse than the front bumper purely because of how many times we were trying to lift and sort of relay it into these recesses like it's really rough down here like that looks like it could be water or something but that is all really rough like texturing of where we had creases and bubbles and all that sort of stuff so like round there is really bad again we've got another bit here where it just didn't quite tuck in well enough but it's just the the angle of it and the vinyl that we were using these here are some creases that we had in it that once we sort of flattened them out as best we could once we learned again how to use the heat gun they just sort of had these marks in them so unfortunately there is quite a lot of stuff like that in the rear bumper all across this deck like in the middle isn't too bad but when you get into the corners it's not really evident on this side but if i bring you over here this corner is really bad. If I can just kind of get some of this water away from here, like look at all these creases on this deck here. Like that bit is awful. That will not stick back down. Again, it's kind of just tension across there that's pulling that out. So the rear bumper is definitely something that I need to do again. Again, down here, really bad. And hopefully I'll be able to show you. Yeah, you can just sort of start to see some of the wrinkling under there where it goes underneath and uh, it's kind of held in by this rear spat so it's not too bad but it is annoying and i obviously know it's there so rear bumper is definitely on the list to be done again but i think based on how many problems we actually had with it when we were doing it it did still come out well enough but it is i'd say the worst panel the rear bumper for me is the worst panel then finally it's just all the little added extras but these took up so much time like the wing mirror caps the door handles these side strips, the side skirts, the petrol cap, this piece of trim across the back here, all sorts of little bits like that were just an absolute nightmare just because of how small and fiddly they were and how much actually had to be removed from the car in order to wrap it. I can't thank the guys who helped me enough, Ash, Catherine, Martin, when you were there as well. I can't thank you guys enough for all your help, but most of those little pieces, so like the side strips, the side skirts, that back piece like across the, the boot and I think the petrol cap and loads of other little bits like that. Like me and Ash were finishing off the bumpers once we got a new technique down, but Catherine was wrapping all those extras by herself and she did an amazing job. These side strips here, perfect. The side skirts, perfect. The only problem with these side strips is that I maybe didn't quite put them back on straight when I put them on. This one's not too bad. I think it's the other side that's really not level. Yeah, see? That one doesn't quite line up. But that bit was my fault. Everything else, the petrol cap, the side skirt caps, all that sort of stuff. Catherine smashed those out and she did an amazing job. So there's not really anything to show you there other than the fact that they are spot on. Also, the wing mirror caps, we kind of had almost like a little competition, I think. This was Catherine's. And me and Ash both had a go at this one. Didn't do a very good job. Again, with the door handles, like this one is pretty much perfect. I didn't do this one. I did the driver's side. And the driver's side is pretty bad all those little extra pieces like the wing mirror caps and the door handle i need to do again like that's not a problem i've got plenty of little bits of scrap vinyl that i can use to do those again so speaking of little bits that i need to rewrap and how much vinyl i actually got left i should probably tell you exactly how much vinyl i bought in order to wrap this car so i went quite conservative i went with 15 meters of vinyl wrap for this so it's 1.52 meters tall and then like i said i went with 15 meters and i've still got i think at least a three meter piece and i can get both bumpers out of a three meter piece so i've still got three meters roughly from the original 15 so it didn't even use the full 15 meters to wrap the whole car but obviously you want to leave yourself a little bit to make mistakes i still think you would have that but Nevertheless, I did buy a couple of extra meters. I think it was three, didn't use it. So that brings us on to the one thing that you guys are all always asking me about, and that is how much did the vinyl wrap cost to wrap this car? So like I said, 15 meters of vinyl. I'm not gonna include the extra three that I bought because I didn't need them and didn't use them, and I won't even need them to rewrap the bumper. So 15 meters would be fine. Just really quickly, the brand of vinyl that I went for was from CSK Wraps. The vinyl itself isn't the best quality, but I got what I paid for because like I've said a few times, it was cheap. So if you wanted to get your car wrapped by a professional, 
for something like this finish as well, this satin matte chrome red, it would probably run you well over a thousand, probably closer to two thousand pound. I'm not really sure exactly on that. Again, it depends on the brand, but I don't think there's many vinyl wrappers like professionals that would actually want to work with this stuff because it's not very forgiving. And normally these types of finishes are a lot more expensive. And if you are going into a more expensive brand, like it's going to just increase exponentially really if you want a finish like this but you guys probably aren't going to believe this but trust me when i tell you that the vinyl wrap for 15 meters to do this entire car in satin matte chrome red from csk wraps cost me a grand total of 220 pounds 220 pounds in vinyl to wrap that entire car. Now that is just for the vinyl itself. It's worth mentioning there's also a few other things you would need if you were gonna do this yourself, like loads of little vinyl wrapping tools. There's like cutters like this. There's like trimming knives to cut the edges, squeegees, little tucking tools to tuck into all the edges and things like that. Wrapping gloves is also a really good idea because it makes your hand glide a lot easier over the vinyl once you've laid it down. And that is gonna add an additional cost. Like I probably, in tools and the gloves and all that sort of stuff, I probably spent another maybe i don't know 30 to 50 pounds and i also had to buy a heat gun now don't make the mistake i made i bought a battery heat gun because i've already got loads of battery tools from ryobi don't get a battery heat gun like i did you'll chew through batteries too quickly get a corded one but i think that's pretty much it for me waffling on i know this wasn't the most exciting video but i've had a few delays with things i've ordered there was a mod video planned for this week but sadly i didn't manage to get around to it just because i'm waiting for some parts but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get those videos out to you, but I just thought this would be a good opportunity to make this video while I had the time. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that gives you some sort of insight into the sort of costs and the things involved with trying to DIY vinyl wrap your own car. So maybe now you're inspired to go and do this yourself, or maybe you're thinking you just don't want the hassle at all after hearing what it was like for me to do this. One other thing I just want to mention before I go, I nearly forgot that is with this brand of vinyl that we bought and used for this car, I did find that if you've watched wrapping videos before and you see people just squeegeeing out air bubbles nice and easily, you can't do that with this brand that I found. It says it has the air release liner on it, but I found that it just didn't work. You couldn't use a squeegee to flatten anything out. You were just gonna put more creases into it. So that was another reason why the wrapping gloves came in really handy because we were having to smooth everything out by hand rather than using a squeegee. Just thought that was worth mentioning if you were thinking of doing this and thinking of going for a cheaper vinyl like I did. But I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. But I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about the process, how much this actually cost me to do, and the job that you think we've done now that you've seen it a little bit more up close. I've tried to be as transparent as possible and show you all the little bits that didn't go so well, as well as telling you kind of what we learned so that it can help you if you do decide that you want to have a go and do something like this yourself. It was really rewarding. It was really stressful, it was really time consuming, but it was definitely something that I'm glad I did and I'm gonna do again in the future. But for this video, it is time to end, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.